Okay, this video is about how to graph rational functions using what we call RADI style. Okay, RADI is an acronym, and you'll see what it stands for in a little bit, but this is the method we use to help us come up with the graphs of rational functions. All right, so a lot of information here. Just hang in there. So before you can use RADI, you have to factor both the numerator and the denominator and remove any common factors. Common factors tell you where the holes are located. We've talked about this. This is just reinforcing what we already know. Now, on the top, R is for the root. Remember, this is x-intercepts. You set the numerator equal to 0 and solve it for x. A is for asymptotes, vertical asymptotes only. You set the denominator equal to 0, solve it for x, and then we graph it. So these are, this is your asymptotes, A for asymptotes. Okay, then if the factors have even numbered exponents in the top or the bottom. So let me give you an example of what this is talking about. Let's say this is x plus 1 times x minus 2. Okay, so I have this problem. If I have even numbered exponents in the top, like this factor right here is, is even numbered, right? That means I have tangency at the roots. Tangency means it bounces. Just like multiplicity, it's the same thing. So it's going to bounce. That that's what tangency means. And you have to answer, where is it going to bounce? Well, where does this factor equal 0? Well, that's at negative 1, 0. So the graph is going to bounce there. That's what we mean by tangency. Okay? Togetherness about the asymptotes. Now this is different. What that means is that on my graph, you look at the asymptotes. This is from the bottom because that's where your vertical asymptotes are. According to this equation, we know that there's a vertical asymptotes where x is equal to 3. So here's my asymptote. What that means is that the graph is going to go together at that point. I mean, they're going to be side by side. That's togetherness, right? Side by side. That's an example, and you'll see more of that in a little bit. E is for in behavior asymptotes, Fabio, Botno, each DC. And then lastly, Y is for the Y intercept. Remember, we plug in 0 for X and we solve it for Y. All of this is review. The tangency and togetherness is a little bit new, but you'll get used to that. Okay? Let's try some examples. All right, look at number one. First of all, it says always to factor. So I really have X minus 1 on top, that's factored. On the bottom, this factors into x plus 2, x minus 2. All right, that's done. I need to look for holes. Do I have any common factors? No common factors, so there are no holes. Roots, okay, that's setting the top equal to 0 and solving for x. So x is 1. So I have a root where x is 1 and y is 0. Vertical asymptotes. I set each of the bottom factors equal to 0 and solve it. So here x is equal to negative 2, x is equal to 2. So I have two asymptotes, vertical asymptotes. All right, now tangency. I'm looking at the factors in the top of the fraction. Are they squared? No, they're not. So I have no tangency. It's not going to bounce anywhere. Togetherness about the asymptotes. Are any of the factors in the denominator squared? No. Once it's factored out, they are not squared. So I have no togetherness here. EBA, in behavior, Fabio, Botno, eats DC. Look at your original equation. Where's the higher power? Bottom. This is a Fabio. Big on bottom, y equals 0. Okay, and then lastly, y intercepts. You put in 0 everywhere there's an x and solve it. So I have 1, it's going to be positive 1 fourth. Remember, that's a y value. Now you have all these things, and you can place them on the graph and figure out where is this rational function going to be. First of all, the root, at where x is 1 and y is 0. So there's a root right here. Vertical asymptote, where x is negative 2. And where x is positive 2. Just put arrows on my asymptotes. Okay. Um, no tangency, no togetherness. Um, y equals 0 is my horizontal asymptote. And then lastly, the y intercept for 0 and 1 fourth. Okay, so what this is telling me is there's my line. Now, remember, horizontal asymptotes can be crossed, so don't be alarmed. Because we know at where x is negative 1, it has to cross the axis according to what a root is. So, looking at my line, 
that means my line is going to hit this y intercept, hit the x intercept, and come down. We know that because it didn't bounce at this x intercept, it just crossed. Now there's something happening in every section created by your asymptote. So we know what's happening in the middle. Now we have to figure out what's happening on the outer edges. Well, we know because of the togetherness stuff. Okay, this one says there's no togetherness. So if my line is up here in the middle, that means the, the outside L is going to be in the bottom on the left. If my line is down here in the middle, then on the right, it's going to be in the top. So those, those lines are not together next to the asymptotes. That's what togetherness means. So this is what my graph would look like, roughly, for this rational function. Try another one. First of all, make sure it's factored. Is this factored? Yes. This is factored. Are there any holes, any common factors? No. Okay, roots. I have to set the x, the top equal to 0. In this case, it's just x equals 0, so my root is at 0, 0. I only have one root. Vertical asymptote. Set that equal to the denominator, so x is negative 2. Tangency. Look at the top. Are the factors squared there? No. The bottom, is the factor squared in the bottom? No, it's not. End behavior, Fabio, Botno, eats DC. This one has x to the first, this is x to the first. This is an eats DC, the exponents are the same. So I simply divide the coefficients. It's 1 over 1. So y equals 1. It's a horizontal asymptote where y equals 1. And then y intercepts. Lastly, put 0 in for x. 0 over 2 which is just 0. So my y-intercept is 0, 0 as well. So now we put our landmarks on our graph. We know it's going to cross right here at 0, 0 because that's an x-intercept and the y-intercept. And we know that there's a vertical asymptote where x equals negative 2. And we know that there is a horizontal asymptote where y equals 1. Okay, now, we, now you've got your kind of boundary line set, and you know it has to go through this point at 0, 0. So the line's going to follow the asymptotes, go through the point. Remember, it can't cross that vertical one, so it's going to have to look like this. So then I figure out, okay, what's happening in my other sections here? There is no togetherness. So there's nothing down here on the left quadrant, nothing up here on the right quadrant. That means the line has to be up here in its opposite quadrant because they're not together. Next one. Factor first. Remember, x over, I need to factor this. You can use MEPDARM, you can use box. Whatever method you use is fine. Just have to be able to factor. Alright, now I look to see are there any holes. No common factors on top and bottom, so there are no holes. Roots, I set the top equal to 0, so my root is at 0, 0. Denominators, or er, I'm sorry, vertical asymptote, take the factor of the denominator. Set them equal to 0, so x is 2, x is 1. So I have an asymptote where x is 2 and where x is 1. Tangency, do I have any factors in the top squared? No, it's not going to bounce anywhere. Any togetherness, any factors in the bottom squared? No. We will see examples of this, but not right now. In behavior, Bobbio, Botno, eats DC. Okay? Where's the bigger exponent? It's on the bottom, so that's a Bobbio. Bobbio. So y equals 0. Y intercept, put in a 0 for everywhere there's an x. So 0 over 0 minus 0 plus 2. So it's 0 over 2. So my y intercept is 0, 0. Again, mark your landmarks. We know it has to cross at 0, 0, because that's a y and an x intercept. And in this case, we have our asymptotes where x is a positive 2. And where x is 1. Vertical, or I'm sorry, horizontal asymptote we said is at y equals 0. Alright, so now we don't know really, we know the line has to go through this 
that intercept. We don't know if it's coming from the top and going around or from the bottom and going up. We need to kind of pick a point, figure out where is this line going. So pick a point that's easy over here, like a negative 1. Let's plug a negative 1 in our equation, and what do you get? You get negative 1 over negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So that gives me negative 1 over positive 6. So it's a negative number. So it's down here. So my line, it has to cross at this point. So it has to come from underneath and go up. That's what that's telling me. I'm going to pick one point. You could pick more than one. I'm going to pick one point to find out where's that line coming from. Togetherness now tells me the rest of the graph. What's happening between 1 and 2 here? Well, it's not together, so it's not next to what's already happening. So my graph has to do this downward loop thing. And that's normal. It can happen. And what's happening in this last section over here, this last part of the graph? Again, no togetherness, so it cannot be below the asymptote. It has to be above, and it has to look like that. Okay? You'll get used to the shapes of these as you go. But picking points can help you figure out where the lines are. If you're unsure, pick a point. And remember, it can't cross the x-axis unless it, there is a root there. Now, I want you to try examples 4 and 5 on your own and see how you do. On the WISC, I'm going to ask you what some of those questions were for the rate, or some of your answers from the rating questions, okay? We'll go over examples 4 and 5 in class tomorrow. All right, so make sure you try them. You can at least get through the rate part, and I want you to attempt to graph them, of course, without a calculator. Good luck, and see you in class.